welcome back. Sorry I didn't have a video out last week, but this one was an undertaking. So I want to be a professional illustrator. It's something I've been wanting to be for quite a while now. And I was speaking to a friend of mine who has been doing the professional artist route for a little while, and she had a suggestion on just producing a couple things that are a little more complete than my normal work, and that just scream, scream illustration, especially a children's book illustration. And uh, she suggested that I basically just redraw a book that I liked from my childhood. So I really liked the idea, and I put a lot, a lot of thought into what I should do, and I wound up settling on a series that I really, really enjoyed it as a kid. Uh, there were lots of books on it. library had some, and I had a few. I think they originally belonged to my brother. So it's the Little Critter series by Mercer Mayer, and they first came out in like 75, I think, and there are so many versions of these stories, and so many different ones. Um, two of which that I read a lot of. Uh, that being, I was so mad, and I think I am a monster. It was like a Halloween one. Um, but I remember reading I was so mad so many times, over and over again, staring obsessively at the illustrations. And since it was a critter, and I've always, always loved critters, I thought... I would uh, choose that one. So I went with uh, I Was So Mad by Mercer Mayer, and I really hope that this is appreciated and, like, I don't get a cease and desist for this. It was done out of love and appreciation, and again, these this is not my character, this is not my scene, I'm just trying to grow as an artist, and I wanted to... Yeah, an homage, make an homage towards this. So I sat down and started with some research. I wanted to find out what the little critter was, and it turns out that nobody really knows. Um, there were arguments for hamster, guinea pig, porcupine, hamster, guinea pig, porcupine, and oh no, hold on made sketches of all of these. Ah, wombat. So hamster, guinea pig, porcupine, or a wombat. So you see, I drew what I was surprised was a very, very uh, on-model version of the little critter. Then I kind of sketched out each of the animals that people thought it was and looked at them closely and marked out like, oh, this one has this and this one doesn't have this. And I settled on guinea pig. I chose guinea pig. I like guinea pig. And I felt like they were the most appropriate. Again, it's a critter. It's a monster. But I wanted to have a place of reference. After I decided on that, I went and did a few little doodles wrote out the page I decided to do. So the page I specifically wanted to do was like one of the first ones and actually the one on the cover. Um, and the line goes, I wanted to keep some frogs in the bathtub, but mom wouldn't let me. I was so mad. Uh, just cause I always loved the spread. It was so cute. And I love frogs and critters. And of course I'm gonna be attracted to more animals on one page than just the, the main character. <laughs> So I sketched out some different formats on how I wanted it to look, and then I started leaning to how I wanted to design the character, and I wound up drawing him like three different times before I found one I kind of like, settled on, uh, practiced hands and some other things, and then I moved to my iPad. Once I was on my iPad, I sketched out in a little more detail, and then um, started playing with things like perspective. And I worked through a lot on that, and I'm so glad Procreate has perspective tools because, oh my glob, it would have taken forever otherwise. But yes, yeah, so perspective tools, uh, figuring out how long a bathtub is supposed to be from this angle was another one. 
That took a while. I actually wound up getting uh, my friend's help. Thank you, Cindy, or Dracontiar, if y'all want to search her up on the internet. Yeah, uh, she looked at like a million bathtub pictures with me, and, and we, found, we found one that worked, and, and yeah. Uh, once I had kind of an idea, I went through on Procreate and kind of inked over everything. I needed to squish and move around the character's face a little bit. When I first drew it, it was really, really flat. And then I was able to like pull it out and make it look a little more round. The original character had a really fat like potato face, but I wanted it to be a little more my style. So there's adjustments there. And then I inked over and then I, I showed uh, the illustration itself to a couple other friends who aren't artist types and who are artist types. And uh, one of them brought up a really good point that he looked mad, but not like kid mad, like adult I'm going to punch something mad. Um, usually, and I know this as a teacher, when kids are upset they have this kind of like, ugh, mom, kind of annoyed, eye rolly, irritated mad, more than like, oh my god, I'm going to murder something mad. So I changed the face, and that helped a lot. After I got the line work, roughly how I wanted it in the character and everything, I put it onto my monitor, turned out the lights, and traced it onto a piece of watercolor paper. And that alone took like half an hour because of all the little details. And my hand hurt and I had to keep taking breaks. But my just tracing off my iPad wasn't quite big enough because I wanted to have room to move around. So that took a while. And then. At this point, if you guys want to see this process, uh, go check out my Twitch channel. Uh, same name, it's a typo, and you'll kind of see me recording and chatting with one of my friends as I work through this. But if you don't want to see <laughs> the hours and hours of work, I started inking. I started um, with a PN Micron for the background. Um, one, because PNs work surprisingly well with rulers and do not ever, because I've made this mistake before, do not, do not, do not use a ruler and a uh, dip pen. That's a mistake um, that I'm saving you from making by telling you not to do it. So, and I would need the ruler because, oh my god, perspective. So, I use the ruler and drew my lines and and set up the background. It actually wound up really nice because there's a nice line weight difference between the background and the foreground, which is, you know, one of those illustrated things they teach you about. One of the things that are closer should have thicker lines to give that depth. Mm -hmm. um, once I lined out the background, I sat down and I started inking the foreground, this time with my dip pen, very carefully. I think I only had like one sneeze on the paper and it was the character's ear, and honestly, I can live with that. I, it wound up not being so bad and actually helped delineate the critter from the frog on his shoulder a little bit more. I want to talk about these frogs for a minute. They are so cute, and like I changed their faces a little bit from time to time and added spots, but like they're so cute. And the little pet mouse rat thing, he always had his pet rat in all the books, so I wanted to make sure he was included. And I just wanted him to kind of fit in with the frogs because I wanted there to be like a clear difference between like the animal people and the animal animals. And like, I gave him a cute little marking on his face because he felt a little flat and he's just cute and I love him. I digress. So inking took a while. It was fun. I did it. It took a while. And then I moved on to coloring. And... Yeah. Watercolor, of course. Watercolor paper, of course I was planning to do watercolor. I started with the walls and moved around the picture and wound up doing like a lot of yellows and a lot of like yellowy warm tones uh, and then kind of faint blues for the, the white slash blue tile. I wanted to make the water in the bathtub and the frogs like really stand out. Um, and I didn't want to do, you know, a ton of red. Plus, yellow is just a bathroom color. And the bathroom in the original book was yellow. I think the bathtub was yellow, too, but I didn't want to do that. 
But yeah, yellow just strikes me as like a happy bathroom color. And I went through and did that and I made sure to add some reds and pinks and little hints of other colors throughout, um, especially on the shelves. I originally freaked out a little bit when I did the floor because I was like, what, what is this like a red, yellow and brown flooring? And I was like, oh my god, this is gonna look so bad. But actually it looked really good in the end, so that was nice. <laughs> Um, once I had the entire background kind of painted in, I started on the foreground and I was terrified because the background happened to work out well and I wanted to really make sure there was a color contrast between what was in the front and what was in the back. And I also really was pushing the colors on the critter because, you know, he's a warm brown critter dude. And I wanted them to look like that. And the frogs, I was worried about making them all too much the same color, but also all too different. So those were all kinds of mixed feelings, too. Um, but putting the watercolor down was fine. I did lots of layers until I was happy with the coloring. And... Yeah. The, the flats and everything were done. And I were happy. I were... I was was happy. I popped it into my uh, Procreate again really quick and tried a different sh couple shading colors. Generally I stick with like a um, magenta, but since there were so many orange and yellow tones already, that would have like lit this painting on fire. So I wound up going with like a purple. I mean the best word is a purple because it wasn't like an indigo blue purple or anything like that. It was like a proper somewhere between that blue purple and magenta purple, so that's just like a purple. And of course I went back and made it a little more towards magenta because that's just who I am. But overall it went really good and when I went through to do the shading on the character's face I watered it down so much I think I probably did about 20 layers until I was about happy. And shadowing took a long time too and I was really terrified of that because what if I made the whole thing look flat and terrible? Uh, but it worked. Then, just like any other thing, I went over it with some other material. So I had used a white gel pen for the highlights, and then I actually had gotten out colored pencils, and I actually pushed um, some yellows on the frog to, to warm them up a little bit. They were kind of a little too cold, and I pushed in... Um, honestly, just kind of like yellow tinting on a lot of things because it was such a yellow picture and it had a lot in the background, so I wanted the foreground. I mean, you're in a yellow room, you're gonna have yellow light on you. And then I went through and did some like spine colors and other tones with some color pencils. And then it was back to digital for final touches.
and again I pushed some yellows, some magentas, and some cyans, fiddled with some contrast, and put in the text. Overall, this entire process took like, I want to say six or more hours uh, from beginning to end, and for me, that's a long time. Like, normally I spend like an hour or two on each illustration, not six, six and a half. So, it was a process. <laughs> I am so proud of it. It's hanging on my wall right now. I worked so hard on it, and it came out so cool. And I'm excited to put it on, like, portfolio and share it with all of you. I need to put a little, like, disclaimer in the corner. You know, this is character belongs to uh, Mace Mercer Meyer and all of that. Because, like, again, this is done in homage. This is done in looking back at something I appreciated as a child and trying to grow as an artist myself. I don't want to claim the character and I don't want to claim the scene. I just want to show love and appreciation and share it with you guys. Anyway, I know this was a little bit of a longer video, um, but again, I had to compact like six hours of work into one video, and you guys have no idea how much stuff I had to delete just to do it in one video. Thought about doing two videos, but yeah. Anyway, uh, thank you for sitting here with me today. Um, as I said earlier, if you want to see a more drawn out process of a lot of this, it's on my Twitch. Don't mind me talking to my friend, and um... Yeah. Cool. Join me next time. I don't know. <laughs> I'll see you guys next week, hopefully. I don't know. I'm going to have time to draw. And uh, thank you to my patrons. Mom, Dad, Jamie, Cindy, Hans, Kaze, Beth, Jfo, and... Excuse me. This is the first time I'm adding this one. Uh... Jigme. Thank you guys so much for supporting me. Thank you so much for being there for me. And um, I'll see y'all later. Bye.